So hari ni kita akan cover uh, the next topic Topik yang ke-6 Lepas tu kita, uh, saya uh, fast forward untuk kita cover bab 9 dan 10 uh, Untuk bantu uh, tuan-puan untuk selesaikan assignment yang ada And then uh, kemudian kita akan bincang uh, bila nak buat midterm And then after that uh, kita ni lah Kita akan bincang sikit apa yang nak kena buat dan sebagainya Alright So the next topic is about health personal risk assessment. Ah uh, prof banyak maaf mencela oh. prof uh, nanti untuk assignment and all the thing mm -hmm. kita go through one time prof kita yeah, just yeah. go through nanti at least yeah, yeah. kita faham eh? uh, nanti selepas right. habis thank you, thank topik you. 10 kita akan go through question assignment. So and then kita akan discuss juga bila kita nak buat midterm lah. Alright. <coughs> thank you. Alright. Okay. Uh, alright, so kita continue dulu dengan uh, this topic about uh, health personal risk assessment So, a part of kita ada biological assessment So, state the definition of health surveillance and biological monitoring List down five type of health surveillance Explain at least three scope of the health surveillance State two characteristic of worker who require health surveillance. State four main purpose of the biological monitoring. Issue of the patient confidentiality. Right. So what's it mean by health surveillance? Surveillance of an individual is to identify the changes on his or her health condition as a result of the exposed to the bio uh, exposed to hazardous material may include biological monitoring. Uh, biological monitoring is an assessment of hazardous element or its byproduct in bodily tissue or fluid of the exhaled blood. So biasanya kita akan ambil specimen daripada udara, uh, daripada pernafasan, apa yang kita hembus dan juga mungkin a part of uh, mungkin ada juga tisu ataupun ada juga uh, yang berkaitan dengan tubuh badan lah. Health surveillance is warrant, uh, warranted if substance is using in the workplace. Substance is hazardous, evident of or reason to suspect work, worker injured, atmospheric monitor insufficient, technique available will benefit those at the risk, method acceptable to the worker, method practical and ethic. Where should it be conducted? So the decision to conduct health surveillance may depend on the various factor among the question to be asked are the element being used or will be used in a Malaysia are the element hazardous to the health are the element pro pro proven to the to be harm to the health so is a moni monitoring sufficient to proper assess the level of exposure Uh, the different surveillance technique for the for the said element have those at least been monitored or are uh, been monitored in a certain method can the surveillance ethic be observed during and after surveillance type of health surveillance biological monitoring medical test medical examination review work match and medical history Review medical record match with the exposure may include one or more or of above procedure. So, mana-mana procedure yang berkaitan dengan uh, biological monitoring, medical test dan sebagainya lah. Employees requiring health surveillance, those exposed to the hazard for the which there is, identifiable health effect and disease, likelihood that could occur, valid technique for detecting of Effect, valid biological monitoring method and reason to believe value might be exceed. Biological monitoring take into account skin absorption and injection, individual variation in the uptake, metabolism, assertion. Biological type of health surveillance, biological monitoring, health test, medical assessment, review for of work 
record and history, review of re exposure record and history. Uh, scope of the health surveillance. Uh, new nature properties of the element, its level and the duration of the exposure change as the result of exposure, frequency of this change, evolution of available epidemiological information and toxicological data, sensitivity, detail and accuracy of the identification of and measurement, control measure to avoid future occurrence, source and method use as well as competence, competency level of those conducting the surveillance. Who requires health surveillance? Health surveillance is required for the worker where the, they is exposed to the hazardous material or the element. They are recognized monitoring procedure. So example of the substance where health surveillance is appropriate uh, so ada beberapa, beberapa elemen yang uh, bila kita detect uh, dalam monitoring so kita kena check juga kepada uh, worker lah untuk kita elakkan acrolna, natril, asbestos, benzene, cadmium, creosote, crystalline, silica, inorganic arsenic, inorganic lead, inorganic mercury inorganic chromium isocyan uh, <coughs> thallium vinyl chloride so ada ada 16 elemen yang uh, yang kita boleh assign lah uh, so ingat balik topik sebelum ni macam mana uh, chemical boleh masuk dalam badan mungkin daripada inhalation mungkin daripada ingestion mungkin daripada skin absorption Biological monitoring help to ensure the continuous protection of the safety and the health of the worker. Sebab kita nak pastikan uh, kita sebelum pekerja masuk, kita buat medical check-up, dia sihat dan dalam waktu pekerja kita uh, monitor by health surveillance dan bila dia pencen, dia masih lagi sihat. Kita nak pastikan yang tu lah. Important of the biological monitoring, comparison with the available standard, allow individual risk assessment for the worker act as an additional control measure and enable detection of the unexpected exposure uh, issue of the patient confidentiality so medical records are the confidentiality so confident uh, confidential uh, information may not be disclosed without permission of the patient among worker to worker pun sepatutnya tak boleh berlaku even dalam HR sekalipun benda ni tak boleh leak lah. Information give, given to the employer should be sufficient to enable additional health surveillance to be conduct. Uh, so, ada beberapa elemen, contohnya noise, uh, specific characteristic, sound, change the change of the pressure in the air, water and specific medium that is identifiable by the human ear. Uh, itu noise, eh, itu sound, manakala noise adalah unwanted sound. Sebab tu dalam ergonomik juga, uh, sound a part of ergonomik, nanti kita akan bincang selepas ni. Uh, kalau di bawah noise regulation, dia lebih daripada 85 dBA. Kalau dalam ergonomik, annoying atau unwanted sound juga dikira sebagai hazard lah. Uh, component of the sound, frequency, pitch, degree of the Highness and lowness, uh, hertz, uh, frequency dalam unit hertz, or the cycle per second, uh, amplitude or the loudness of sound. So dalam sound ada dua, satu a part of frequency, uh, dia punya time frame, dan satu lagi adalah dia punya amplitude ataupun dia punya loudness uh, yang kita ukur dalam decibel. So uh, ni kita back basic um, berkaitan dengan frekuensi. So frekuensi merujuk kepada 1 hertz is 1 wave cycle per second. So kalau katalah uh, frekuensi equal to 1 over time. So like, uh, kalau nak kira uh, kita uh, kita tolak tepilah dia punya amplitude. 
So sepatutnya kalau katalah uh, 1 Hz Dia ada satu kitaran dalam satu second Kalau 4 Hz Ada 4 kitaran lengkap dalam satu second So kalau katalah kita uh, kita punya uh, kita punya radio uh, kita tune ke frekuensi 103.3 uh, so ada frekuensi dia waveform dia a uh, 103 kHz dalam satu time frame lah so maksudnya dia punya dia punya time dia punya cycle dia lebih rapat lah right so seterusnya about the amplitude so tadi kita tengok berkaitan dengan frekuensi uh, time domain dia satu full cycle mana kala kalau kita kira amplitude ataupun loudness of sound the sound of intensity berapa tinggi dia punya uh, dia punya gelombang so lagi tinggi la lagi besar amplitude lagi tinggilah dia punya gelombang so uh, antara puncak gelombang Uh, we peak to peak gelombang pucat gelombang ke pucat gelombang kita panggil dia sebagai wavelength ataupun uh, panjang gelombang wavelength alright so secara umumnya uh, sound level and their source uh, rocket launcher ro around 140 decibel so ketinggian dia uh, lebih kurang 140 pneumatic cutter 130 electrical saw uh, jaraknya 1 meter 120 uh, air, uh, air conditioner in the auditorium lebih kurang dalam 30 dBA and then uh, photocopy machine uh, jarak 2 meter lebih kurang 50 uh, dBA dan Uh, contoh vacuum cleaner 80 dBA dia amplitude dia mungkin berbeza-beza lah right. so ada uh, beberapa karakteristik untuk sound ada beberapa type of sound satu continuous sound satu fluctuating sound satu impulse sound dan satu intermittent sound so kalau intermittent sound ni dia uh, tak selamanya kuat dia slow lepas tu kuat bila contoh ada jam lonceng so mula-mula dia slow lepas tu dia kuat and then dia slow balik so part of intermittent lah what is noise? Uh, noise is unwanted sound disruptive sound wrong sound in the wrong place at the wrong time Ah uh, itu yang kita panggil sebagai noise lah physical property of sound sound intensity loudness uh, measure in dB 0 dB A Uh, lowest sound heard 130 dB dBA uh, jet airplane 140 dBA pain threshold uh, frequency of sound pitch and tone so uh, intensity of sound bergantung kepada uh, kepada dB mana kena frequency of sound pitch and tone measure in hertz cycle per second Uh, mungkin kalau siapa yang biasa uh, main dengan mixer ke sound dan sebagainya so dia boleh nampak uh, setiap jenis sound tu dia berbeza dia punya frekuensi contohnya bass 500 hertz uh, treble 3000 hertz so ni contoh sound pressure uh, sound pressure level so uh, paling seronok ha, di bawah kita boleh ambil yang bawah lah ha, threshold of hearing kosong so dia ada satu part sound pressure satu lagi part adalah sound pressure level dia ada dua part right significant frequency range in hertz human hearing uh, 16 to 20 uh, lebih kurang 16 ke 20 hingga 20 ribu hertz speech lebih kurang 600 ke 4800 hertz uh, male voice peak around 350 female voice uh, maximum 750 hertz small radio uh, 200 ke 5000 uh, hertz lah so 
uh, suara perempuan dia lebih tinggi dia punya frekuensi dia uh, okey subject effect of the sound change uh, change in the energy level uh, so ni a part of uh, effect of the sound change lah and then uh, occupational at risk uh, biasanya dekat uh, shipyard dekat granite quarry grinding sewing Uh, iron and steel mill, boiler work sebab tu dekat boiler memang keluar daripada control room wajib pakai earmuff kalau tak lama-lama boleh jadi pekak lah glass manufacture uh, garment, garment and textile uh, so kilang-kilang pembuatan baju dan pakaian paper and printing, air terminal work industrial bottling, canning and metal box So, ini a part of kita punya telinga. So, normally, bila ada uh, bunyi, kita boleh ukur dalam bentuk frekuensi. Frekuensi, kalau kita nampak tadi, is gelombang. So, gelombang yang masuk ke dalam telinga akan lalu drum membrane. So, drum membrane dia akan yang bergetar. So, dia akan hantar uh, signal kepada... Uh, tulang-tulang uh, dalam telinga dan ditransfer daripada uh, bentuk getaran melalui koklia dan dihantar melalui uh, koklia akan ubah daripada getaran menjadi electrical signal so kemudian dia akan dihantar ke sensory nerve lah so uh, telinga kita ni uh, mengubah daripada bentuk getaran kepada electrical signal uh, suara kita daripada electrical signal ubah kepada vibration right head effect of noise noise is a form of energy effect depends on loudness duration of exposure frequency type of noise impulsive steady noise above 115 dBA dangerous noise above 140 dB dangerous noise below 70 dBA consider safe so that's why kalau kita nak buat audiometric test biasanya perlukan 48 jam dalam keadaan yang tenang lah baru kita boleh buat audiometric test kita nak tengok telinga dia dah kembali kepada normal ataupun memang ada injury alright health effect of noise kita biasanya ada dua satu acute bila acute mungkin rupture of damage of the eardrum So kalau kita tengok tadi dia punya eardrum kalau eardrum dia koyak so dia tak mampu transfer getaran lah. So boleh menyebabkan a uh, hilang pendengaran. Uh, damage to the ear ossicles. So mungkin juga dia boleh berlaku temporary hearing loss a uh, sekadar sementara lah. Uh, saya pernah kena TTS temporary hearing loss bila mana kita a uh, dekat tepi jalan tiba-tiba lori tayar pecah meletup boom rasanya dalam 5 ke, ke 30 second tu rasa macam tak dengar apa-apa loss uh, so itulah yang kita kita anggap sebagai acute lah so dia is temporary so selepas satu ketika dia akan kembali elok dan apa bila uh, lama kelamaan kalau temporary 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 lama-lama dia boleh jadi permanent dia akan jadi chronic noise induced hearing loss uh, so daripada uh, temporary dia jadi chronic so bila chronic mungkin uh, dia punya loss of hearing loudness damage of the middle ear so mungkin ossicle dan sebagainya koklia dia rosak uh, dalam dalam koklia tu dia ada dia punya rambut so mungkin rambut dia dah mati dan sebagainya so tak mampu lagi untuk transfer signal daripada Uh, gegendang kepada koklia lah. Alright, phase in the hearing loss development phase 1, 10 to 20 days uh, tinnitus, uh, ringing headache, tiredness uh, dizziness, so masa mula-mula mungkin dalam 10 ke 20 hari uh, sakit kepala, pening dan sebagainya. Masa yang kedua, uh, kalau kita tengok uh, Fasa yang kedua, a few months in a year, intermittent tinnitus. So, 
uh, kita dah boleh kesan dah by audiogram so contohnya A ni adalah uh, normal B and C adalah B dan C adalah early stage of noise induced contohnya pada uh, pada tiga dia dengar ni 10 uh, 500hz okey 2000 1000hz okey uh, 2000hz okey and then masuk 3000hz okey lagi untuk B dan pada ketika 4000hz dia tak dengar uh, so kena tambah uh, dia punya kekuatan dB uh, mungkin 15 dB baru dia dengar so kita notify lah kat sini and then bila 6000 Hz kembali ok so uh, kalau kita tengok kita compare dengan uh, D uh, later stage of impairment showing loss uh, separating to the other frequency so dia dah makin lama makin uh, jatuh dia punya uh, dia punya respond time dia punya respon respon curving dia so dan uh, kalau kita tengok uh, yang paling teruk uh, E lah later stage after long exposure so pada ketika 500 hertz pun dia susah nak dengar dan uh, sebab tu saya pernah cakap tak semestinya uh, ada masalah pendengaran ni dia tak dengar dia contoh C ni C ni early stage uh, 10 uh, 500Hz dengar 1000Hz dengar 2000Hz dengar 4000Hz tak dengar so kena tambah uh, dia punya dB baru dia dengar and then ok balik uh, so pada frekuensi 4000 frekuensi dia tak dengar tapi pada 6000 frekuensi dia dengar 6000Hz so pada certain certain Uh, frekuensi sahaja dia tak dengar uh, tapi lama kelamaan kalau expose uh, dia langsung tak dengar lah so uh, fasa yang ketiga round 5 ke 10 tahun abnormal hearing inner ear dah damage uh, fasa keempat lebih daripada 10 tahun hearing loss set in uh, conversation affected lah so dia tak dengar pun so dia perlukan hearing aid dan sebagainya factor affecting uh, PTS Uh, permanent threshold shift dan temporary threshold shift uh, threshold shift ni dia punya ni lah dia punya perubahan dia so kalau nak tengok kalau nak kira uh, dia lebih ke bawah ke bawah ke bawah tu dia punya threshold dah bertukar lah overall sound level uh, more than 60 to 80 dBA noise spectra speech frequency more potent total duration of exposure increase with the duration Intermittent, intermittent, intermittency of the exposure, quiet period reduce individual susceptibility, type of noise impulse or impact more damaging. So, uh, ini a part of hearing handicap risk lah. Non auditory effect. Ah, uh, so bila kita tak boleh dengar, kita juga mungkin akan ada masalah daripada speech interference. Uh, speech or target sound disrupt by the background noise uh, so dia mungkin bubbling, dia mungkin uh, masking uh, indicate of the speech intelligibility percent of articulation loss of the consonant uh, AI articulation loss uh, below then 12 excellent communication percent AI more than 30 virtually unintangibility and unintangible speech interference level SIL so background noise SPL uh, it mean, means in the 500 to 1000 1000 to uh, 2000 2000 to 4000 hertz so ni ada part of uh, level lah right Uh, seterusnya, auditory warning and cues. Uh, warning ideally in the 500 to 3000 hertz range should be 10 dBA louder than the background noise to be heard. Signal to the sound ratio of the 8 
to 12 DBA, annoyance, destruction, psychological uh, disturbance, so noise level uh, below than 55 DBA, for example, office of production, equipment, noise, distract worker, concentration of tasks, landscape office for the comfort, pipe with white noise, uh, 48 uh, to 52 dBA to mask speech sound from the neighbor area, noise criteria curve, and see or the PNC guideline for the ambient SPL in each oct octave band for the speech privacy. Performance effect, uh, mixed result, pace task, rhythm noise may improve simple repetitive tasks by the pacing work, information, transfer task, show performance degradation, uh, back of mental demand, complexity and considerable detail required. Example, taking telephone order, involve product pricing, billing and shipping information through computer, noise feature likely to de degrade performance, level and content variability and intermittency, high level repeated noise, frequency more than 2000 Hz, any of the above combination. Uh, infrasound, low frequency sound, may cause full body vibration in chest resonant range of 50 to 60 Hz, annoying and discomfort. Uh, ultrasound, uh, around 10 kHz to 20 kHz, at the 75 dB subject, annoyance, uh, ACGIH, stable thresh, uh, threshold level uh, TLV for the ultrasound. So normally occupational at the risk, quarrying activity, mining activity, textile industry, construction activity, carpentry activity, uh, car manufacturing, so, masalah pendengaran masih lagi menjadi penyakit pekerjaan nombor satu uh, sejak saya, kalau saya tak silap, dah lima tahun. Uh, hearing noise memang juara lah. So, health effect daripada noise boleh emotional disturbance and sensitive communication problem, loss of hearing and hearing related injury. Tinnitus, psychological disturbance high blood pressure, uh, bila bising pun boleh menyebabkan high blood pressure sebenarnya. So, hearing loss, conduction type, breaking of eardrum, movement of ossicles, hammer bones in the middle ear. So, kalau tengok tadi, uh, ossicles tu, dia tulang-tulang rawan yang transfer uh, vibration, sensory, uh, neural, Damage of the hair follicle in the inner ear, effect of the boat ear, hearing loss at the high frequency. Uh, control measure, isolation of the process with the high noise level, minimize exposure, engineering control, modification of the work process, use of personal protective equipment, admin, administrative measure, and the safe work. Safe work practice exposure monitoring conducted by the competent person sekarang kita dah ada NRA noise risk assessor so all everything about the uh, assessment NRA akan buat so once uh, positive kena buat audiometric uh, conduct by uh, audiometric technician approved by OHD lah uh, health assessment, history of the previous occupation, hobby and medical history, ear test, audiometric test. So, audiometric test requirement, once a year, noise exposure is at level or above the PEL, basic audiometric test, show hearing injury, annual audiometric test, standard threshold shift, once every two years, expose 55 to 90 dBA. So, dalam regulation baru, uh, dah berubah dah sebenarnya yang ni. Uh, once detected 
uh, dah ada baseline untuk audiometrik memang kena buat tiap-tiap tahun kalau tak ada so tak perlu buat lah tapi uh, uh, questionnaire untuk noise memang kena buat tiap-tiap tahun Alright, so kita continue the next topic. Uh, kita moving, uh, kita fast forward ke depan untuk kita uh, so you all boleh cover untuk uh, assignment dan sebagainya. Alright, so kita akan tengok berkaitan dengan ergonomics, fundamental and principle of ergonomics. So uh, kita tengok sikit lah berkaitan dengan history of ergonomics. So ada beberapa scholar yang memang sebut pasal uh, ergonomics Frederick W. Taylor uh, memang dikenali sebagai bapa uh, pengurusan uh, bapa pengurusan moden. So discuss the method of the increasing efficiency of the work, focus on the work productivity issue. So di samping tu juga uh, Frank and Lillian uh, Gilbert so develop the 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 built uh, system to analyze movement made the during work tasks uh, divide into two type of movement efficient and non efficient so the next uh, rob w banes continu continuation of the gilbert work with the uh, philosophy of ergonomic uh, economic movement to increase productivity and reduce over exertion so secara umumnya Uh, ergonomics datang daripada dua perkataan Greek ergon iaitu work or effort nomos adalah rules so maka wujudlah ergonomics so perkataan ergonomics mula digunakan oleh Wojciech Jastrowski pada tahun 1857 a field of the science that try to harmonize the system of work with the human capacities So, objective of ergonomic to increase level of the work efficient and effectiveness or any related activity undertaken undertaken such as through uh, through reduction of the mistake increases of productivity and simplification of tasks and then uh, one more to increase positive human value such as increase safety, reduce fatigue and stress, increase work comfortability and increase quality of work and life in a general. So uh, this one, uh, positive value uh, via the ergonomic approach for the employer, uh, safety and health, comfortability, satisfi uh, satisfaction. And then uh, the most important adalah for the welfare lah. So untuk employee uh, uh, tambah performance, quality, productivity and flexibility. So dalam ada kata lain uh, juga menjaga uh, kebajikan employer lah. So lagi satu dengan harapan ergonomik mampu untuk mengurangkan masalah-masalah pekerja. Contohnya expertism bila sakit tak boleh nak kerja. So ambil MC. Uh, penting dan sebagainya lah right so uh, walaupun ergonomik ni dia tidak straightforward dalam akta tetapi dia juga disebut melalui to promote an occupational environment for the person for the person at work which is adapted to their psychological and physiological needs alright so uh, ada teori yang kita boleh Right. Ada teori yang kita boleh kaitkan dengan ergonomik, part of balance theory. So maksudnya part of work environment factor, organizational factor. So dia juga boleh datang daripada human factor, <laughs> human factor, work factor dan juga technological factor lah. So bila kita laksanakan kerja, kita harapkan a balance of theory lah. And then uh, selain nama lain bagi ergonomik juga uh, dikenali sebagai human factor lah. Otherwise, ada yang pakai human factor, ada yang pakai ergonomik. Uh, hampir sama tapi ada sedikit perbezaan lah. Biasanya US akan pakai human factor. So, purpose of ergonomics, the most important adalah tolerable work system, acceptable work system, optimal work system. So, the last is kita nak harmonisekan antara pekerja dan juga kita punya sistem bekerja lah. So, uh, 
melalui ergonomik kita ada beberapa part ataupun branch of ergonomik ada anthropometric ada biomekanik ada fisiologi dan ada juga psikologi so anthropometric ni merujuk kepada kita punya ukuran tubuh badan so biomekanik ni kita punya perilaku lah so yang dap daripada puan daripada ISN lebih uh, faham lah kot part of anthropometric biomekanik So metabolism, reading temperature and heartbeat as workload indicator. So normally dalam keadaan very low ataupun resting, kita akan guna oksigen lebih kurang 0.25 hingga 3 liter per minit. Kita punya lung breathing lebih kurang dalam 6 ke 7 liter per minit. Rectal temperature lebih kurang dalam 375 So heartbeat kita lebih kurang 60 ke 70. Ini dalam keadaan uh, resting lah. So bila makin meningkat, makin banyak uh, oksigen yang kita pakai, contohnya very high, 2 ke 2.5 liter per minit. So kita punya lung uh, breathing makin tinggi 43 ke 56 liter per minit. So kita punya suhu rectal temperature pun akan naik 38.5 hingga 39. Dan heartbeat kita akan bertambah lah. So, untuk extreme spot, uh, makin tinggi lah. So, kadang-kadang berlaku juga kadar RS ataupun tiba-tiba jantung berhenti. Kenapa dia boleh jadi begitu? Sebab satunya adalah heartbeat yang tidak terkawal lah. Oksigen tak cukup, heartbeat kita dah terlalu tinggi. So, boleh juga menyebabkan uh, kadar RS sebenarnya. Di samping itu juga ada isu environmental factor. Environmental factor may affect Hearing, vision, gender comfort and health. Uh, some example of ergonomic environmental problem. Sick bilir syndrome. Excessive noise. Improper lighting. Temperature extreme. Uh, physical stressor. So, physical stressor place pressure of the stress on the part of the body. Joint, muscle, nerve, tendon, bone. So, this injury are sometimes referred to be cumulative trauma disorder ataupun CTD. Ataupun repetitive strain injury RSIS So bila kita sebut CTD ni is cumulative Bila cumulative ni benda yang kita kumpul berulang-ulang-ulang kali So barulah dia boleh jadi uh, CTD sebenarnya uh, Cumulative trauma disorder Cumulative occurred gradually over a period of the week, month or years Sebab tu uh, kajian saya dulu Antara orang yang first ada masalah muscular skeletal disorder ni normally orang yang dah 10 tahun bekerja baru dia sedar dia ada masalah MSD dan umur paling muda uh, capture isu MSD ni umur 21 tahun dan ke atas lah and then uh, trauma trauma is bodily injury to the nerve tissue tendon or joint kadang-kadang uh, injury ni bukan bukanlah semestinya koyak dan sebagainya mungkin uh, Uh, soft tissue koyak tak nampak uh, dia benda yang mikro pun boleh boleh jadi isu sebenarnya and then disorder is physical uh, element or the abnormal condition uh, example of CTD include couple tunnel syndrome epicondylitis epicondylitis tenosynovitis uh, brusitis so normally sekarang ni kalau uh, orang yang banyak menggunakan pergelangan tangan Uh, memang banyak terdengar CTD lah uh, Sorry, CTS, Couple Tunnel Syndrome Right So, the main risk factor for the office related CTD are Repetition, our posture and position uh, Excessive pressure or force Another risk factor for, for the CTD would be vibration The majority of CTD are caused by repetitive motion That would not result in injury if only performed once contohnya thousand of keystroke typing uh, kerja dia typist satu hari mungkin 10,000 patah perkataan dia type uh, so boleh ni lah hour of the filing day per day stamping dozen of paper frequent lifting uh, repeated motion with mouse so uh, jangan kata kerja pejabat tak ada risiko Uh, so sama je, pejabat ke, site ke, uh, line manufacturer ke So semua ada risiko-risiko yang tertentu lah 
and then uh, ada juga isu risk factor our our position uh, contohnya leaning forward at your desk typing with the wrist at the odd angle uh, rising shoulder while typing reaching to use mouse twisting neck to look at the monitor or phone uh, lifting object from the below waist or above shoulder so seterusnya excessive force uh, typing with the too much force or the pounding the key sebab tu uh, kalau dulu uh, orang yang kerja typist uh, mesin type tu memang ada isu excessive force uh, cuma bila dah pakai keyboard ni sepatutnya tak banyak isu part of excessive force lah stamping lifting heavy box of the paper or crate carrying office equipment using improper grip so prevention strategies the elbow should be the comfortable angle with the while hanging at the side from the shoulder the shoulder should remain relaxed in a lower position while typing so paling baik sebenarnya bila kita ada ada workstation ketinggian kerusi dan meja perlu diselaraskanlah so tak boleh terlampau tinggi Uh, untuk kita elakkan kita punya bahu terangkat avoid leaning forward at your desk uh, maintain nature s curve of your spine so untuk makluman kita punya tulang belakang adalah dalam bentuk s curve bukan dalam bentuk c curve so bila kita membongkok kita akan ubah daripada s curve menjadi c curve support lower back uh, lower back Keep fit supported on the floor or the footrest Kalau katalah uh, kita punya lantai tu ting rendah Tak sampai kaki Boleh pakai footrest dan sebagainya Avoid typing with the wrist at the odd angle Keep them the new uh, neutral position Not bend up or down or the side to side uh, the, keyboard, the, the keyboard should be slightly lower than the normal desk height If it is not low enough, try rising your chair height. Prevent your leg from the dangling by using a footrest. Kita kalau boleh, uh, kita punya kaki is 90 degrees. Kita punya siku dengan lengan pun hampir 90 degrees lah sepatutnya. Keep home uh, row of the key of the elbow level. Adjust your chair. Uh, do not pound the key. Use the light touch. Use to hand to perform double key operation control c control f whatever lah yang kita shortcut sepatutnya boleh pakai dua tangan tapi biasanya kita akan pakai satu sebelah tangan jelah alasannya nak cepat tapi boleh menyebabkan twisting on hand to do it position frequently use equipment so that you don't have to reach for it please mo place monitor in front of your not of an angle uh, dulu ada style uh, meja uh, letak monitor 45 degrees ataupun 60 degrees so uh, kita ada ruang untuk bekerja lebih tapi hakikatnya kita akan twisting body dan twisting kita punya kepala lah take look, uh, lots of break to stretch and relax hold the mouse uh, lightly keep your hands and arm Prevention strategy, pay attention to the signal your body provide uh, provides you. Uh, by right sebenarnya untuk berlakunya uh, masalah CTS, uh, uh, masalah cumulative trauma disorder, CTD, bukanlah bermula dengan sakit. Dia bermula dengan ketidakselesaan sebenarnya. Uh, mungkin tak selesa, uh, duduk lama-lama pun tak selesa, berdiri lama-lama pun tak selesa, lepas tu balik penat. So mungkin ada otot-otot yang panas dan sebagainya Itu merupakan signal-signal awal Sebelum berlakunya injury But what about the headache? Uh, main office related headache are caused by eye strain uh, Issue juga dry eye Monitor glare uh, Tired Strain eye muscle So by right uh, Kita kat Malaysia ni jarang pakai artificial tear Sebenarnya artificial tear pun quite good untuk kita basahkan mata untuk kita relax kita punya mata lah eye strain position monitor at the comfort comfortable distance uh, avoid glare adjust VDT uh, video 
device terminal uh, ni kalau pakai monitor lah uh, sebab tu contoh kalau kita punya TV uh, ada jarak minimum antara monitor, antara TV dengan kita untuk tengok TV lah uh, keep screen clear of dust look uh, look up and away every few minutes or so so by that kita ada uh, 20 rules 20 20 20 rules uh, 20 minutes work break 20 second and then uh, look far away 20 feet uh, so itu CV20 sebenarnya tapi it depends ada juga yang jarang buat lah so boleh juga menggunakan ergonomic product contohnya keyboard yang special uh, wrist rest mouse pad uh, adjustable chair adjustable desk so kalau perasan sekarang mouse pun dah ada dah tak macam mouse pun ada ergonomic mouse yang macam just hold the phone sahaja ergonomic respecter doing repetitive work use the excessive force improper or the static body posture work in the long duration vibration due to the hand stool contact stress on the blood vessel blood veins muscle and tendon due the contact stress due to due to use of hand tools or equipment uh, musculoskeletal disorder ataupun MSD uh, penyakit berkaitan dengan rangka tubuh a situation arising by excessive use resulting in a wear and wear and tear of the muscle tendons joints and surrounding tissue in the long term may result in capability capability to use the related body part. So, ini yang saya sebut tadi. So, dia bermula dengan warning level. Uh, bodily, uh, bodily ache, minor pain, uncomfortable, fatigue. Ni nampak macam normal lah. Tapi dia sebenarnya dah warning level pun. So, kemudian akan a part of affecting level. Diseases, injury, clear symptoms, swelling, pain affecting for performance dan selepas part yang ni dia boleh ke arah incapable level incapacity and then boleh disable dan boleh menyebabkan kematian juga sebenarnya seterusnya ergonomic job analysis method there are many different type of ergonomic job analysis method this method consists of various technique for taking a systematic look at the job and work tasks that may contribute to problem once you know where the problem may exist it easy to come with the idea for making improvement checklists are generally a simpler less comprehensive type of the ergonomic job analysis method uh, so contributing factor description ada awak posture ada repetition ada forceful assertion ada pressure point Uh, vibration or other factor so each task list uh, contribute factor you observe and your reason them so kalau siapa yang rajin lepas ni boleh ambil ergonomic risk assessor era initial dan juga advance so boleh go further untuk untuk tahu berkaitan dengan ergonomic improving your workplace using ergonomic awareness checklist result may Uh, decide to improve your workplace before you uh, begin look at the following basic information designed to help you and your employees answer some relevant question what are the ergonomic improvement which task should be trying to improve how do we make in informed choice about the ergonomic improvement how do we know if our improvement are working Sebab kadang-kadang ergonomic improvement ni dia tak semestinya with the cost. Kita ubah sedikit pun dia boleh menyebabkan uh, benda tu jadi lebih uh, kondusif lah. What are the ergonomic improvement? Ergonomic improvement are change made to improve the fit between the job and the capability of the employees perform it. They are commonly grouped into the three category, engineering improvement, admin improvement dan safety gear. Biasanya kalau kita ambil pekerja ataupun kita bekerja, kita berdasarkan missionary yang ada. So, biasanya macam itulah. Kalau katalah kita beli kereta, 
kereta tu dah memang macam tu kita kena fit in kereta kepada kita sedangkan kalau ergonomik dia fit in kepada kita sepatutnya bukan kita yang fit in kepada dia so maksudnya kalau katalah kita beli kereta yang ergonomically design ikut ketinggian kita so ikut keselesaan kita so itu lebih tepat lah sebenarnya so engineering improvement engineering improvement include uh, rearranging modifying redesign or the replacing tools equipment workstation packaging part or product this improvement can be very effective because they may reduce or they eliminate the underlying reason for the contributing factor the best time to select engineering improvement is when the new facility process or work procedure are being planned so seterusnya admin improvement admin improvement include changing work practice of the way work is organized they may not address the reason for the contributing factor or other problems administrative improvement usually require continual movement and employee feedback to ensure that the new practice and policy are effective so admin improvement option providing variety of job adjusting work schedule and work pace providing recovery time uh, for example muscle relax relaxation time modifying work practice ensure reg regular housekeeping and maintenance of work encouraging exercise uh, so boleh provide variety of job mungkin boleh buat job rotation mungkin buat boleh buat job enlargement uh, boleh tukar-tukar boleh tambah Ilmu means increasing the variety of com combining two or more jobs or adding tasks to a particular job. To be effective, both of the improvement rely on the rotating through a combination job and tasks which differ in the mus muscle or the body parts used. Contohnya, kalau bekerja duduk, mungkin boleh tukar bekerja berdiri, baring dan sebagainya. Work posture, amount of repetition pace of work, amount of physical exertion required, visual and mental demand, environmental condition, adjusting work schedule and work pace, try to limit the amount of time any employee has spent performing a problem job. If you have new employees or employees re returning from the long absence, introduce them to the normal work pace and workload gradually like an athlete in the sparring spring training so kalau kita nak impose apa-apa uh, pace ataupun uh, kita punya kelajuan bekerja so kita kena uh, slowly lah kena tingkatkan slow so ada recovery period muscle relaxation break can help prevent the accumulation of the fatigue and injury to muscle and their associated structure to try to break up with the frequent short recovery period uh, that's why kalau perkeso ataupun sokso mana-mana yang terlibat dengan kemalangan uh, normally dia akan ada program return to work RTW so untuk kita fitkan balik kita punya kita punya badan lah untuk laksanakan kerja even recovery period as a short, as a few second on a regular basis are helpful. For example, providing a mixture for a tool can allow the hand to relax momentarily between use. So, boleh juga modifying work practice, uh, pay close attention to how the work is being performed, maintaining mid-range working posture simple, means sitting or standing upright and not bending the joint. This can be done by trying to keep the neck, back, arm and wrist within a range of the neutral position. And then next, uh, about the safety gear. So, safety gear ataupun uh, PPE. So, uh, PPE ni dia ada banyak nama. Safety gear, dia ada hearing device protection. Uh, so, benda ni tetap lebih kurang sama lah sebenarnya. Uh, include glove knee, elbow pad, footwear and other item that employee wear. Glove can be protect hand from the cold or injury. 
uh, proper footwear and antifatigue soles can be prevent employees from the sleeping and prevent fatigue for the long hour of the standing. Knee and elbow pads can be protect the body from the pressure point while pressing against hard or sharp surface. Back belt, back belt is uh, are not the typically considered to be personal protective equipment. They may help maintain to proper uh, curve of curve of the spine during lifting of the physical exertion. So, uh, kita nak jaga kita punya tulang belakang. Kita boleh uh, so sekarang ni ada macam-macam produk. Kita boleh jagalah rigid or not elastic. Uh, back belts may serve the awareness tool by helping the remind employees to reduce bending and twisting when the lifting or handling material. Whether back belts are effective in a preventing injuries remain open question. So, benda yang paling baik adalah part of training lah. So, uh, the most important uh, bila kita nak laksanakan kerja, kita kena ada knowledge dan juga ada skill. So, daripada situlah baru kita boleh elakkan daripada berlaku kemalangan. Share information with your employees. Inform employee about the uh, MSD, about the uh, process implementing them in the new workplace, nature of the musculoskeletal disorder, uh, training, uh, so multiple type of visual aid, for example, picture, chart, graph and so on hands on exercise for the new tools so bila kita beli tools baru the ensure kita ada training yang proper untuk dia orang gunalah right employee should be have uh, should always be informed about of any workplace change remember that you have gathered a lot of good information in the looking at your work task and considering improvement try to provide ample opportunity for for question and answer, finally remember the that video may be used as the training aid, but they are not sufficient if used alone. So, mungkin uh, selain daripada video, mungkin perlu ada tunjuk cara dan sebagainya. Which task should be improved first? Uh, so, apa yang kita nak improve dulu? So, kita kena determine which task you want to address first. Consider following frequent and severity of complaint. Uh, so, kalau ada complaint berkaitan dengan ergonomik, kita kena tengok dulu lah. Contributing factor or other problem you have identified in a particular task. Ideas your employees have for improvement. <coughs> Difficulty of impl implementing various improvement. Your time frame, potential effect dan juga technical and financial resources. Ini paling penting lah bila kita nak buat improvement, uh, ada yang memerlukan kewangan dan ada juga yang tak perlukan kewangan. So, it depends lah. So, kita kena decide mana dulu. How do we uh, make informed choice about the ergonomic improvement? So, improvement option for the your workplace, use in-house human resources, uh, review original design specification, Uh, look through equipment catalog, talk talk to the equipment vendor, contact trade contact trade association, or the labor union, contact ada in your industry. Mungkin kalau ada persatuan boleh di dengan persatuan. Consult an expert in ergonomic. So next about the job analysis, determination of the measurement criteria and work target, uh, compilation of history of targeted job tasks identification of ergonomic risk factor, discover of the prevention measure, uh, selection of the prevention measure, implementation, implementation of prevention measure, monitoring of the prevention measure, precise hands movement. Uh, so, kita tengok sikit berkaitan dengan characteristic of sitting work. So, normally, uh, bila kita bekerja, kita So, kita boleh cakap 70% adalah kita bekerja dalam keadaan duduk. Ada juga yang berdiri. So, characteristic of sitting work, precise hand movement, high body stability, use of the exact and sensitive tool, food control, 
all work component uh, and equipment within the sitting range, handling of heavy load, static posture for the long duration, frequent, frequent handling of the heavy load, frequent stretching and movement that require use of energy, work mobility, frequent fast food exertion that requires high energy, uh, characteristic of the seat or stand work, provision of high chair as the worker is required to altern alternate sitting and standing and change of the posture, mobility of the chair, provision to the foot rest and reduce swelling and fatigue of the leg and foot. Uh, so, ni neutral seated posture. So, kalau tengok, kita punya, kita punya uh, lengan dan tangan is 90 degrees. Kita punya lutut pun 90 degrees. Dan se sebenarnya, uh, di antara kerusi dan juga lutut, dia tak boleh rapat. Dia kena uh, ada sedikit ruang lah. Then, uh, kalau kerusi ni boleh adjust dan meja ni boleh adjust, tak payah pakai foot rest. Tapi bila kerusi ni statik, uh, meja pun statik, so kita terpaksa guna foot rest lah. So kalau tengok, uh, dekat Malaysia, dah ada kesedaran untuk ada adjustable chair. Kalau dulu kita cuma ada adjustable uh, adjustable table, so dulu kita ada adjustable chair saja. So, paling baik bila kita uh, menaip ataupun dalam keadaan duduk, pastikan uh, kita punya lengan 90 degrees dan ada juga armrest. So, bila berlakunya sebegini rupa, kita boleh pastikan yang kita punya bahu tidak terangkat sebenarnya. Right, left straight, sitting work position. Uh, so, ni lebih kurang sama lah. Nanti degree, uh, adjustable height dan sebagainya. Lama support. Uh, dulu, kerusi macam ni dah cukup lah. Pada ketika itu, kita ada masalah dengan uh, slip disc pada uh, L3, L4, L5. Tapi, lately ni kita pun dah ada slip disc pada uh, bahagian tengkuk, terasik. So, T3, T4. So, that's why sebaiknya kalau ada headrest juga sebenarnya. City work characteristic, careful hand movement, require high stability using the accurate sensitive fit, remote control when the part equipment located in a sitting room, handling heavy loads, fix posture for the prolonged period. So, untuk keadaan berdiri, uh, so ada beberapa major yang kita boleh gunakan untuk position work uh, mungkin dia lebih tinggi berbanding, berbanding dengan light work dan heavy work mungkin lebih rendah juga berbanding dengan position work dan light work sebab dia perlukan tenaga so mungkin dalam 36 inci ke 39 inci untuk lelaki 33 inci ke 35 inci untuk perempuan standard work characteristic right uh, okay, sitting and standing work characteristic provide high chair. Uh, so kalau boleh kita dapat kerusi yang tinggi, kita boleh duduk dan berdiri dalam keadaan yang mudah lah. And then kita juga ada normal and maximum level out. So kita ada normal capaian biasa dan juga capaian maksimum. So dalam kita punya uh, uh, workstation. Mana-mana yang berkaitan dengan kerja-kerja kita ni, kita letak kat normal lah. Mana yang uh, kurang penting, uh, kalau gaduh dengan bos, telefon kita letak jauh. Uh, nanti kalau bunyi, tak sempat nak angkat. Ataupun handphone uh, pun uh, letak jauh. Tapi kalau ada, ada urgent, uh, memang kena letak dekat normal uh, area lah. Proper sitting and standing, lifting. Walaupun dia standing, dia tetap juga perlukan foot rest. So, uh, sitting macam tadilah. Elbow at the 90 degree angle. Dan paling baik sebenarnya bila kita nak angkat, kita position, uh, squat position, barulah kita angkat menegak. Unfortunately, kita biasa angkat uh, kaki straight, kita dah angkat barang. So, sangat tidak digalakkan lah. Dan, uh, Avoid situation that require twisting the neck or bending forward, backward or the 
or to the side uh, kita punya kepala ni is uh, sepatutnya 90 degree pandang depan uh, kita punya tulang is straight forward straight lah bukannya kita ke kiri lebih ke kanan lebih uh, itu is twisted uh, right hands and wrist uh, keep the hands straight uh, ini juga cabaran bila kita guna mouse biasanya mouse tu Uh, rapat dengan kita tapi kita bend kita punya wrist right uh, work posture preference for the selected work so kalau kita lifting over 5 kg uh, first charge is uh, standing berbanding dengan sitting so work below elbow level uh, first charge is standing uh, horizontal ladle out standing manipulation of precise Uh, sitting, inspection and monitoring by eyes Sitting, movement frequently Ini sitting ataupun standing Mana-mana boleh right. Alright, seterusnya kita tengok uh, Muscular skeletal disorder uh, MSD, the disorder occur When the body part is called On the to work to work harder stretch what other impact more the directly or otherwise function in the greater level than is prepared for msd can affect the body muscle joint tendon ligament and nerve typically msd affect the back neck shoulder upper limb less often they affect the lower limb the immediate impact may be minute but when the occur repeatedly the constant trauma cause damage so ni uh, common cause of msd uh, bila uh, leaning forward so body dia daripada s curve jadi c curve and then uh, cradling phone uh, ni mungkin dah tak ada lah kot sebab semua dah pakai handphone kan dah pakai uh, earpiece dan sebagainya dah tak perlu Uh, pakai hmm. nak cradle pun and then excessive bending the wrist uh, kalau tengok kita punya pergelangan tangan uh, ini yang banyak berlaku dulu monitor place at the angle to the body so ini yang menyebabkan body uh, head twisted lah uh, so sepatutnya kena elakkan so common cause of MSD kita ada pitcher shoulder uh, rotating cuff tendonitis and brucitis kita ada juga tennis and cold foot elbow. Uh, ini banyak berlaku, uh, puncanya berlaku kepada atlet main golf dan juga tennis. Uh, couple tunnel syndrome. Kita ada juga low back pain. Kita ada juga carpet layer knee. Right. Uh, next strain, shoulder tendonitis, low back pain, uh, tennis and golf foot elbow. Couple tunnel syndrome, hand and wrist tendonitis. So, kenapa benda ni boleh berlaku? Bila kita buat kerja, bending forward. Kita kita body bending ni dalam jangka masa yang lama. Lebih daripada uh, 2 minit. Dalam Mungkin dalam kita mengecat ni, uh, 30 minit kita kena selesaikan. So, depends lah. So, reaching above shoulder level. So, ini pun banyak berlaku. Uh, reaching band behind the body. So, kita overuse kita punya uh, lengan. So, sangat bahaya lah. Uh, di samping itu juga, ada juga rotating the arm. Uh, bending wrist. Uh, so, kita bending dalam kiri dan kanan. Ataupun atas bawah. Dan kita ada juga isu uh, repetitive. Uh, packing bottle. So, for example, MSD injuries. Uh, mungkin ada foot pain, ada ankle sprain, ada elbow pain. Uh, boleh juga berlaku shoulder separation. ACL pun boleh berlaku. Arthritis of the knee. Kalau nampak ACL dan arthritis of the knee ni macam uh, ACL ni macam sport injury je. Tapi MSD juga hampir macam tu. Uh, Simptom je lebih kurang sama. And then rotate proto calf muscle uh, mungkin ada tear ada injet dan sebagainya uh, right so bila tennis elbow akan ada berlakunya tear in tendon uh, 
Uh, so menyebabkan ketidakselesaian lah, right? Uh, ini contoh uh, shoulder uh, separation uh, rotator cuff, golfer elbow, right? Kita sambung uh, topik seterusnya berkaitan dengan uh, ergonomik risk assessment ataupun era. So kita akan fokus kepada salah satu tools yang kita boleh gunakan dalam uh, era adalah coronal musculoskeletal uh, coronal musculoskeletal discomfort questionnaire ataupun CMDQ. Uh, so CMDQ ni uh, developed by Dr Alan H dan juga uh, ergonomic uh, graduate student at the Cornell University. Uh, so Uh, very established so tak ada masalah so a simple uh, questionnaire so by right ada ada beberapa uh, questionnaire yang ada di bawah CMDQ so ini adalah the basic of CMDQ so lelaki dan juga perempuan so ada uh, assessment kepada neck shoulder right and left upper back apa arm, lower back, forearm, wrist, hip, tight, knee, lower leg. So kalau orang Malaysia ni uh, sebut kaki, sepanjang-panjang kaki lah. Tangan, uh, sepanjang-panjang tangan. Tapi on ergonomik, very specific lah. So uh, ada juga uh, questionnaire yang berkaitan dengan uh, hands symptom, uh, right and left hand so ada juga untuk student version ada juga turki version ada macam-macam lah tapi asasnya uh, untuk ini adalah untuk uh, standing worker uh, so kalau uh, sitting worker dia lain pula so tapi normally kita boleh sebab kita boleh cakap 70 to 80% up to 90% pun banyak pekerjaan kita adalah Uh, berdiri dan juga duduk lah part of alright so ada berbagai kaedah untuk pengiraan uh, CMDQ so by simply counting the number of symptom per person yang kedua by summing of the rating value for the each uh, person so kalau kita tengok detail kat sini uh, during the last work week how often did you experience each pain discomfort dia tak start dengan uh, terus terus pain uh, dia mungkin discomfort so never one to two times uh, three uh, to four times last week uh, once every day several times every day so untuk CMDQ bagusnya dia cuma refer kepada experience minggu lepas ada Uh, Tools-tools yang lain dia perlukan sehingga experience tahun dan sebagainya. Agak susah sikit lah. So, di samping itu juga dia akan tanya about the uh, If you experience uh, each pain, discomfort, how uncomfortable was this? slightly uncomfortable, moderate, very uncomfortable. So kalau katalah dia never, so dia pun tak akan jawab lah. So kalau dia kata one to two times, uh, mungkin uh, slightly uncomfortable, mungkin moderate ataupun very uncomfortable. If you experience uh, each pain, discomfort, did this interfere with your ability to work? Uh, so kalau katalah mengganggu, adakah dia mengganggu kita bekerja? Uh, not at all slightly interfere ataupun uh, subtly uh, interfere lah so bergantung kepada kita punya gangguan alright so boleh juga uh, by waiting uh, kita kira dengan pemberat the rating score more easily identify most of the serious problem as follow uh, never kita tak kosong kosong lah satu ke dua uh, kali seminggu satu poin lima tiga ke empat kali seminggu, tiga poin lima. Uh, setiap hari lima. Several times every day, sepuluh. So, ada juga kita boleh multiplying the above frequency score kosong, satu poin lima, tiga poin lima, lima, sepuluh by the discomfort score, satu, dua, tiga by the 
interference score 1 2 3 so uh, so kita boleh inilah kita boleh uh, multiply antara frekuensi kali dengan discovered score kali dengan interference score uh, so far Uh, validity dan reliability untuk CMDQ sangat baik dan uh, tak ada masalah lah dan kita boleh guna pakai je and then uh, untuk uh, advanced era macam mana kita nak buat assessment kita boleh guna ada beberapa tools yang kita boleh guna contohnya rapid entire body assessment uh, reba so ada rula ada ada beberapa lagi lah ada macam-macam tools yang kita boleh gunakan berdasarkan kegunaan ataupun kita bekerja posture badan kita alright, so contohnya reba so semua ni kita boleh dapat melalui internet je type, insyaAllah, tak ada masalah akan akan ada lah uh, untuk reba, this ergonomic assessment tools use a systematic process to evaluate full body posture, MSD and the risk associated with the job task uh, so refer pada job task lah A single page worksheet is used to evaluate required of the selected body posture, forceful assertion, type of the movement or action repetition and coupling. The reba was de designed for the e easily use without need for any advanced degree in ergonomic or expensive equipment. You only need the worksheet and pen. Dan ada satu lagi mungkin uh, goniometer lah. Kita nak ukur the body bending. Right, so shoulder in second uh, thought you probably should finish reading and study this guide and I suppose a clipboard with uh, using the reba worksheet evaluate wrist, uh, forearm, elbow, shoulder, neck, trunk, back, leg, knee after the data for each region is collected and score table of the form uh, then use to compile the risk factor variable generating a single score contohnya uh, bila kita katalah uh, neck trunk and leg analysis so dia ada dua part satu neck trunk and leg analysis dan satu lagi arm and wrist analysis contohnya waktu dia buat kerja uh, dia punya kepala ni uh, ok je so maksudnya tak ada apa-apa perubahan lah uh, kita letak satu and then adjust kalau dia ada twisted tambah satu lagi kalau dia back bend uh, kalau dia uh, neck is the side bending uh, kalau side bending kena tambah satu lagi lah so score dia kita boleh letak dua so nanti kat sini rang uh, dua so dalam laju yang ni lah and then seterusnya locate trunk position uh, so kalau normal plus one kalau dia uh, trunk position dia ke belakang uh, mungkin plus 2 ataupun kalau dia expose uh, dah macam uh, rukuk ni uh, dia plus 4 uh, so adjust juga kalau twisted tambah lagi satu kalau side bending tambah lagi satu so kalau katalah uh, dia punya trunk position ni uh, okay. 4 mungkin 6 so boleh tengok lah So, untuk kaki, uh, dia berdiri dua kaki ke, kaki sebelah bengkok ke, dua-dua uh, belah bengkok ke, so leg ni lah. So, daripada situ, kita dapat skor dia. And then, uh, ada juga isu kalau katalah ada uh, load skor, ada uh, mungkin dia ada beban dan sebagainya. So, hasil daripada, it's a simple sebenarnya baca pun insyaAllah boleh faham and then hasil daripada tu daripada table C ni kita boleh tengok contohnya satu negligible risk no action required tak perlu ada perubahan kalau katalah dua ketiga low risk change maybe need, needed so nak change apa change dia punya posture lah so four to seven medium risk further investigation change soon so mungkin cara kerja dia dah tak betul so kita kena tambah baik Okay, 8 ke 10 high risk 11 plus uh, so yang bla 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 bawah ni very high risk uh, kena implement, implement change right so reba worksheet is divided uh, to body segment label A and B right 
cover neck trunk and leg section B cover the arm and wrist uh, macam tadi lah so ni contoh uh, katalah uh, dia punya score is neck score adalah satu sebab dia ada satu dua ataupun tiga so neck score dia satu uh, terang position dia tiga terang position tiga sini lah and then leg dia satu leg dia satu so score dia adalah dua in the step two a plus two score was used for the trunk position zero to twenty degrees ini and then plus one was added for the side bending so under berlaku side bending okay plus one alright so tu kaedah-kaedah untuk kira lah sebenarnya so at the last nanti uh, so dapat skor pada table C ni lah so uh, detail dia boleh go through nanti right final rebus score 9 9 merujuk kepada uh, 9 ni lah 8 ke 10 high risk right selain daripada reba kita juga ada rula rapid upper limb assessment so uh, reba dan rula hampir sama tetapi ada sedikit perbezaan dari segi uh, body posture uh, mungkin kalau reba is uh, entire body rula is apa uh, apa limb assessment lebih kepada uh, bahagian badan atas lah right okay so nanti boleh go through uh, detail so macam mana nak dapat skor dan sebagainya right alright so itu sahaja untuk uh, ergonomic risk assessment so kita bincang sedikit pasal assessment so uh, ini kita punya short answer question as a individual individual uh, paper lah so semua orang kena jawab so apa yang nak kena buat adalah uh, kena jawab lah why health surveillance important in occupational health management explain the act and regulation related the health surveillance identify the advantage ni saya rasa tak ada masalah lah straight forward right Dr. Uh, Kairo boleh buat point form ke? boleh tak ada masalah jawab lah macam mana macam mana pun yang penting okay. Uh, dijawab cuma dia ada juga each answer should not exit 300 words so jangan tulis banyak-banyak lah right Prof yang ni kita boleh jawab according to our understanding kan there's no right wrong answer kan uh, Prof dia bila master punya level ni tak ada soalan yang tak ada jawapan yang salah uh, dia mungkin jawapan tu tak tepat tapi tak salah uh, mungkin right. dia tak dapat full mark tapi inilah so Soalan dia, uh, kenapa important of uh, health surveillance, uh, kenapa health surveillance tu penting, apa regulation yang terkandung disebabkan oleh health surveillance. Uh, so, yang tu kena kena refer nota lah. Alright. So, yang ni saya rasa clear cut tak ada masalah. Alright. Uh, deadline, Prof. Deadline. Uh, deadline saya nak bagi... Uh, Eh. Bagi last kali lah Last kali Saya takut saya tak sempat Minggu ke tujuh <laughs> Alright uh, Sila lah hantar sebelum 21 April Boleh kot eh? 21 April eh Baik 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 okay. Semua assignment 21 April Tapi siapa siapa dah siap Lagi bagus hantar awal lah Saya boleh marking dan saya boleh Haa uh, lagi senang lah, senang cerita lah. Ha. Bila lambat-lambat ni saya perlukan uh, banyak lagi masa. <laughs> okay, seterusnya kita ada midterm. Uh, yang ini group of four. So maksudnya you all ada lapan orang kan? So lapan orang ada dua group lah. So silalah buat group. So ada dua paper je yang akan hantar pada saya. So uh, soalannya adalah You are required to research 
the implementation of ergonomy at your company as you chosen tak kisahlah awak nak pilih macam mana macam mana so apa yang perlu ada nama company kat mana dia punya background lepas tu apa yang berkaitan dengan ergonomik evaluation of compliance analysis apa yang awak apa yang awak dapat tak kisahlah uh, uh, the thing is adalah uh, untuk assignment ni tak semestinya the true data awak boleh assume pun tak ada masalah cumanya bila saya baca nanti saya nak bagi markah adalah berkaitan dengan ada recommendation ada masalah yang awak jumpa uh, ada awak dah buat era ke awak dah buat whatever lah ok clear kot clear ke Uh, Dr. Cairo, yang recommendation tu dia tulis straight three tapi dalam kurungan lima. Oh, Mana satu ni? Tiga ke lima? Uh, tiga, tiga, tiga. Tiga, okay. Ha. Nanti betulkan eh, sorry. Tulis tiga, huruf tulisannya tiga tapi nombornya lima. Ha. Letak tiga je, cukup lah. Alright, so ini berkaitan dengan midterm. And then ada satu lagi assignment. Uh, prop yang yeah. tadi tu yang uh, pilih company tu dia boleh pilih mana-mana lah contohnya macam uh, grocery, grocery shop pun boleh lah macam tu boleh tak ada masalah uh. yang penting dia boleh dijawab itu je uh, okay. uh, kriterianya ada itu je alright uh. yang terakhir uh, case tadi uh, saya nak ubah daripada uh, you all ada 8 orang kan jadikan pair Okay, study ni pair lah. Saya nak minta buat pair. So, apa yang nak kena buat adalah Occupational Safety and Health Noise Exposure Regulation 2019 punya regulation. Baca, fahamkan, summarize apa yang ada dekat regulation tersebut dan discuss, justify justify your decision. So, maksudnya simple je sebenarnya. Paper kritik, awak baca noise regulation tu, apa yang awak faham dan discuss uh, compare dengan yang dah revoke ke dan sebagainya tak ada masalah simple je okey uh, tak faham prof macam mana lagi sekali prof kita okay. ambil yang okey awak baca regulation noise exposure tahun 2019 summarize kan okay. regulation tersebut okey dan discuss and justify your decision compare dengan ada regulation yang ada yang dah uh, regulation yang dah ada ke regulation yang dah revoke ke so compare lah itu yang kita kita kata paper kritik so maksudnya awak summarize kan <coughs> uh, noise exposure regulation ni okay, okay. Uh, compare dengan yang dah revoke yang dah revoke maksudnya yang sebelum 2019 lah ya yeah. yang justify decision tu macam mana tu lah bro uh, You kena sebutlah je, bila kita katalah terdapat perbezaan di antara uh, peak level antara noise exposure regulation 2019 dengan apa benda. Uh, so apa perbezaan dia. Uh, so kena itulah. Satu awak summarize kan uh, regulation tersebut. Satu lagi awak discuss dan justify your decision lah. Maksudnya okay, kita nampak ada perbezaan. Uh, so bezanya pick dia berbeza. Kenapa berbeza? Ah so by regulation bla 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 sebut dah ada perbezaan. Contohnya macam tu lah. Alright. Clear ke? Oh, okay, bro. Okay. So itu saja. Oh, maksud dia untuk yang ni dia bahagi, dua bahagian tu sajalah. So bahagian summarize. Tu. Ah, ya. Yeah. Simple je. Lepas tu discuss the finding and justify lah. Ya, yeah, betul. Selesai assignment. And then You all ada 20% lagi untuk markah. Sebab final 30% je. 20% lagi untuk midterm. Dan nanti kita akan buat. Nak beli pula bateri saya. Dia padam. Dia nak cakap. Eh. Alright. So satu lagi kita akan ada midterm. Uh, apa? Midterm test. Okay. Midterm test is uh, kita akan laksanakan pada pada 21 April. Okay. Okay. Itu saja untuk uh, assessment. Kalau so, oh, yeah. kalau 
Selain 21 satu bulan boleh ke? Selain 21, kenapa? Hmm. Tak payah ada exam ke orang satu Ada exam Exam bila? Tanya je lah, 21 bulan Exam apa? Uh, ni bos Siang ke malam? Satu hari tu Itu yang susah sikit tu <laughs> hmm, Sebab apalah Posit Sebab uh, hmm. Semua orang akan jawab secara online hmm. So agak susah sikit lah Kalau uh, yang tu kena bincang dengan Yuni Razak kalau boleh Selain daripada tu Yang midterm yang, yang ni untuk final kan? Kan, ni midterm Banyak soalan kan? Oh midterm, so midterm uh... Midterm tapi kita buat minggu ke enam Sepatutnya kita kena buat minggu ke Tengah-tengah lah, minggu ke lima ke Tapi bagi raya dulu So 21 April kita akan buat midterm uh, Tempoh dia seminggu ke Prof? Yang bukan assessment saja ke? Eh kita ada kita ada midterm. Sebelum ni ni apa SKC cakap semua assessment dalam bentuk assessment ke? Kita ada beberapa assessment. Okey. Uh, dalam saya punya peran, uh, ini perancangan yang yang SKC bagi eh. Kita ada midterm 20%, kita ada assignment 50%, 50% tu kita dah pecah 3 and then kita ada final as assessment 30%. Ah uh, bro, untuk yang midterm ni, uh, dia uh, mesti kena jawab pada hari yang sama atau dia ada bagi tempo nanti beberapa saya, hari. Nanti saya bincang balik, tapi sebab soalan dia straight forward, saya tak saya tak rasa dalam tempoh tu. Uh, tapi nanti saya bincang balik dengan 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 SKC tanya macam mana untuk midterm. Ya. Yeah? Sebab okay. selalu memang assessment memang kita ada time frame ikut hmm. lecturer lah ada yang bagi seminggu, ada yang bagi tiga hari. Ya. Yeah. Untuk uh, open dia punya question to open untuk midterm dengan final assessment tu. Tak apa. Nah, uh, besok saya akan finalize dengan SKC tengok macam mana. So nanti saya akan okay. lukas mula lah. Right. Okay, so, tapi kalau boleh bagi tempoh lah Prof. <laughs> uh, itu sudah pasti. Okay. Okay, kalau saya you, boleh bagi tempoh memang saya akan bagi tempoh lah. Tapi intentively kita akan run on uh, minggu yang ke enam lah. 15 ke 21 April tu Nanti kita akan bincang lah Tengok macam mana So yeah, around that uh, Date lah Tak apa Detail besok saya saya confirm eh? Tak apa tak ada masalah Alright uh, Itu saja 